Hi, I'm Julia from Armenia. Tamunia from Georgia. Uh, Nargis from Kyrgyz Republic. I do from Kyrgyz Republic. Anastasia from Belarus. Lilith from Armenia. Uh, I lectured at the American University. So I specialize in data protection and freedom of information, and I also work for the government. I work in the field of environmental protection. I'm an environmental lawyer as well as I run my own environmental NGO. I'm a TV producer for private TV channel. I produce documentaries and social commercials. I'm an artist and uh, also we have a design platform built in and also we have a project uh, how to find your mission and yourself. Uh, that's all as a trainer. I teach public policy analysis at the University of Georgia. I also provide policy advice to our government on the topics of citizen participation, women empowerment, youth development and others. I study at the University of Glasgow Masters in public policy specializing in urban policy. So what's the greatest thing about women in your country? The greatest thing uh, in Armenia like, uh, is uh, we have a lot of bright and uh, beautiful women who are uh, empowered and motivated to bring a change and to be change makers in Armenia. The greatest thing I think is that we have a great potential to do great things and accomplish great things in our country. All around the world, so in Kyrgyz Republic, also we have uh, uh, many, many beautiful, uh, strong, and smart uh, women and girls who want to be the change. By many, many, I guess, centuries, uh, people said that we need to stay at home and do our homework and so on. Yes, of course, we need to do this, but uh, we have right and we have talent, uh, talents to improve ourselves and show our. Uh, like a personal qualities, talents, and everything, and um, our um, intelligence, and so on. So that's why I guess this is one of the huge uh, challenge mm -hmm. to believe to yourself and to show uh, yourself to the world. But unfortunately, we have still bright kidnapping in Kyrgyzstan, so we try to fight this problem. Uh, it means that if the guy we don't know can just Right, kidnap you, just steal you. We can walk down the street. If he if he, if he likes you, he just takes you and um, he can just take you and just to bring you to his home. Now it's illegal. Yeah, it's a, it's a crime, but we still have these cases, unfortunately. So um, I feel like it's like new um, right now um, stream. Yeah, we have new generation of women who are more strong, who are strong, who are. Um, like energetic, so who are brave as well. So the, the greatest challenge, like I feel like in all post Soviet Union countries, like uh, women usually are sitting at home, you know, raising their babies. So um, we don't have uh, previously opportunity to be what who we are. You know, so and, uh, I feel like it's the biggest challenge right now uh, to prove that what we can do, so to do what we really want to do. As for Armenia, I would like to speak about women living in rural areas and urban areas separately. In rural areas, the challenges that they face are mostly lack of access to information, the mentality because they are taught that they are born to bear children, to bring them up and to take care of household. As for urban areas, uh, I think we have lack uh, of trust towards women and this also comes to explain the difference in salaries between female and male population in cities in Armenia. I think, um, you know, we talk about um, giving equal opportunities to women and this is something that our government has been working on and with the support of international donor organizations, of course, and there are so many policies already uh, developed and written. Uh, the letter of these policies are kind of perfect, I would say, perfect in terms of really giving all the rights and, uh, that women deserve to have. However, in practice, this is the issue, kind of enforcing those policies on a like, realistic life basis is really difficult in Georgia. And I think, uh, you know, policies can be changed and the letter can be different, letter of the law can be different. But if we don't change the mentality of the society, if we don't change attitudes towards women, if we don't change our predefined roles, what we think women should play in the society, then no policies will help. And if we don't change this telephone... Yeah, this is mine, so that's why, unfortunately, I need to... 
in most of our countries, we don't have uh, law or regulation that hinders women to go to politics or work in the public sector. But in reality, we have we have a low number of women, which means that either they lack the capacity of working or being in the high rank position, or they are not motivated enough, or there are other things on the table that we can't see, and uh, this should be uh, analyzed thoroughly and just addressed by both society and policymakers. Police, we had uh, we had a terrible case last year when the girl was kidnapped first and then she was killed in the police office actually mm-hmm. by this guy who kidnapped her. This is the second right. great problem. Yes, so I, I just felt so bad just hearing this story. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't want even to imagine how it was, but I think this is again comes to to the implementation mm-hmm. because in countries like ours, quite often the adopt lots of laws uh, that are similar to the European standards that are synchronized with the West, with best practices in the world. But unfortunately, in reality, what we see, we see that the mindset and the mentality of the people don't change. And if they don't change, we can't just by adopting a law, change the reality and change, make the life of women easier. You asked about what about police, right? These are police men, men. Uh, males uh, who don't believe in those type of things. Like in Georgia, for example, we now do have a law about sexual harassment Mm -hmm. and we do have a law about uh, violence in the family against women. However, there have been so many cases reported by women when they called for police, when police didn't even believe to their stories or treated them badly or poorly. So it's definitely mentality and attitude. Going back to the question of civil society and the government and gap between their uh, activities that they are doing, it's I think the case in most of our countries and uh, our governments failing to um, face most of the policies or some of them, civil society and us are becoming the other pillar of uh, uh, bringing the state forward. So it's the issue we are at the local level, community level, see the problems with the small resources, we start the change. And uh, at some point, all this accumulates uh, in the longer term or shorter term, it brings the change. I tell you that right now we have, again, the same problems uh, with the civil society and government. But civil society become more strong and strong from the years. And we see that right now there are a lot of communities like in Kyrgyzstan that um, can uh, support, uh, we're talking today about um, ladies, about women, but uh, they can support different social idea and move it uh, into reality. So and just uh, uh, show the government how it can work. So again, um, thanks to different international supports, so we have um, kind of um, an opportunity to show best world practices to the government. And after that, they can implement these practices in, in their policies. Just to add, uh, and the role of media is very important in this mm-hmm. situation. Yeah, we have to raise these questions, this problem day by day, again and again, in order to change something mm-hmm. more or less uh, free when you walk on private TV channel, and private uh, TV stations and companies. So in state TV channel, of course, every, there is a censorship. So you cannot uh, cover everything you want. Basically, you hear all the praise mm-hmm. in the uh, government-owned media and all the criticism in the private. I guess that in the Kyrgyz Republic, if we will compare with the other countries in Central Asia, we have more freedom to say something. And there's a, a different issues was on the Facebook when we gathered our voices together to to say something about, I don't know, about violence against women or or something else. And we have influence to government and government listen to us and uh, do some, how to say, uh, some actions uh, to, to do, how to say, to be in harmony with what people say on the Facebook. Because this is a really great power here in Kyrgyzstan and we feel this freedom and i hope that we will continue to work on different themes uh, themes and of course uh, bright mapping too so and i hope that it will change so step by step well i um, always look up to american women uh, as role models of promoting equality in the us and me too campaign for example has been an inspiration for me personally and for other women in georgia and for other campaigns in georgia as well 
So what I see now is just a little bit changing trend, and maybe I'm wrong, but as an outsider, that's what I see, and I'm kind of afraid that the U.S. will at some point stop being a role model for me. And I hope it's not going to happen, but please, American women, <laughs> please do continue fight uh, your fight, because we are here and you are our role models. I know that uh, U.S. has always been a role model for uh, freedoms in any aspect for, for lots of countries, especially the countries that we come from. Uh, and unfortunately, the, the speed is uh, becoming slower and slower. And what I know now, that all the women's, women in the world, they have the same problems. So I think we need to continue to do our bits in our respective countries, just to be united. And then I'm sure that we will obtain our, our objective. On March 8th, we, we will celebrate, of course. It's our day, so we will talk about women's rights in Kyrgyzstan in our morning program, in our talk shows, for sure. And in the evening, probably, we will gather with my colleagues, with my friends, yes, and we just will talk and have a nice evening. In Armenia, usually, it's one of the best and festive events. And uh, unfortunately, it's the only day, day men give flowers or <laughs> gifts, hopefully, March like Women's Day won't be just this one day and this will be just a day to raise awareness how women are important in our lives. On March 8th, I have a class and I will go and share about the freedoms with my, with my students, most of whom are female. And I, I'll end up my day celebrating by myself uh, the promising future of all the female population. And in Belarusia? So we have day off, by the way, so we are very lucky <laughs> celebrating this day. So then, of course, um, we will speak about uh, how strong uh, women are. So, and of course, uh, uh, we will receive uh, flowers, sweets and gifts from the guys. Uh, but I think it's also very um, good to, to have kind of this holidays, to, again, to speak about uh, a woman, to understand how important uh, it is, what we are doing, so, in, uh, so we will celebrate. <laughs> Well, yes, definitely I will go out with my female <laughs> friends and, of course, we'll celebrate and, you know, just, you know, gossip a lot and, you know, talk about women's stuff, of course. <laughs> but besides that, we also will also encourage each other to, you know, be stronger, be more courageous and, you know, have more accomplishments for the next mm -hmm. International Women's Day. Happy Women's Day! <laughs> <laughs>